Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, do any of you have that friend, that relative, that companion, that person you care about that can't speak up for themselves in court? Anybody? Well, let me give you some advice. Go ahead and do a contract with them to become their manager, their financial manager, to handle their financial affairs and do a limited power of attorney within the body of that contract. What will this do? Ladies and gentlemen, it's really simple. This will allow you to represent them in court the very same way that managers can represent parties in court, as I did back in 2001 when I was the manager of my friend's financial affairs here in California. Did anybody tell me I could do that? No, I knew I could do it because attorneys do it all the time. The power and power of attorney is your power, not the courts. The courts don't get to control your power because that's your power. What I'm trying to say is the document we're producing and giving away for free, I'm still working on it as you saw in the background. I'm just editing and I had to get rid of a couple of things and add a couple of things. So there's been some amendments, quite a few. It's 11 pages, shouldn't be much longer, but quite a few things that are being edited. It has everything you need for correcting some stupidity on this planet. Okay, it has everything you need for correcting some stupidity on this planet. Ladies and gentlemen, with that power of attorney, if you learn the rules of small claims court and become proficient with that, you shouldn't have any problems, none whatsoever. Okay, hey, this is just a couple of minutes of me explaining how you can help your friend when the courts say, you can't represent another party in court, but you can represent their interests, okay? <laughs> they can't even argue with that because all you got to do is show them the contract. Of course, I can come in as the manager of her affairs. That's her business. And she has the right to conduct her business the same as any corporation. She's a sole proprietor. Does she have a sole proprietor? She doesn't need to have a sole proprietor on record. She is a sole proprietor. This is her financial interests. She has to report this on her 1090, I mean, excuse me, her Schedule C, which is solely for sole proprietors. So long as she files a Schedule C, she qualifies as a sole proprietor. So stop arguing with me when you already know these things. Stop trying to nitpick and see if we don't know what we're talking about. Now let's move on. Ask and answer. Shut up. Seriously. Seriously. I'm literally telling you, that's my response to them. Stop sitting up here picking arguments. You're just coming up with presumptions. You're trying to create a reason. Unless you have a fact and a conclusion of law, just shut up with the stupidity and move on to another question. I promise you, that's my response. Again, I'll say it again. Y'all can't talk like that. Y'all be careful, okay? But that is my response. When you hear me do that right there, that's letting you know that's real. That's not me making that up. That is my response. That's what I'm thinking. That's me saying, stop with the stupid stuff. Do that to somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. You don't get to sit up here and dictate to me what my access to the court is. I tell you what my access to the court is. I'm the petitioner, not no stupid litigant. Literally, they created the word litigant, people. I'm not a litigant. You go litigate. But I'm not litigating. I'm filing a petition. I'm getting redress. And you will not interfere with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. I got a meeting I got to get to. So we'll see y'all later. Have a good day, all right? Don't say I didn't tell y'all.